Good afternoon. Thank you for all coming. Today, I'm here to announce a new software project, FO, uh, which is stand for fee over email. The main goal of this project is to create a program that allows internet users in censored countries to receive news feeds. Before I begin, uh, allow me to first introduce myself. My name is Sho Ho. I'm a member of the Internet Anti-Censorship Team at the Broadcasting Board of Governors for BBG. BBG is the federal agency that oversees and supports the operations of Voice America, Radio Free Asia, and so on. Together, these broadcasters bring news to people around the world in 60 languages and reach 175 million people every week. In today's presentation, I will first go over some background information so you know what we do. Next, I will review the current censorship and anti-censorship technologies. Then I'll explain what is FOE, the technology behind it, and its limitations. After that, I will do a demo so you can see how FOE works. In the end, we, I will tell you how you can help us to fight censorship and maybe make some money doing it. Okay, uh, let me start by telling you what our team does. When I read the news, uh, I sometimes find it very sad uh, that the elephant and the donkey are always trying to uh, crucify each other when they get a chance, or never get again a chance. And sometimes I wonder, why can't they just stop fighting and do something more constructive? Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Reconcile the differences, work together, and create something good together. Huh, look at the picture. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> But with all the bad things that we read about our government and others, there are at least two things uh, we should be happy about. Number one, we can actually read about the bad things on the news. Number two, uh, we can criticize our government or make fun of it. In other words, freedom of press and the freedom of speech. These are some of the most important rights that we have in the United States. However, um, in some countries, things can be quite different. Over there, people don't always get the full story of the news um, because their government will remove harmful news uh, for them. Over there, um, people are, n are not allowed to criticize their government. So people like John uh, will be locked up in jail. This is called censorship, so, um, and we are here to fight it. But things are not always that simple. There are two main challenges when fighting internet censorship. Number one, we need to find some useful anti-censorship programs like Tor, FreeGate, UltraSurf, Siphon, and James Marshall's CGI proxy. Fighting internet censorship is like a cat and mouse game. Censors will come up with new ways to take over the internet, and we need to come up with new ways to fight them. 
The next challenge we face is how to reach people in censored countries. Let's see, we have the best anti-censorship software and we want to tell people about it, but how? How do you reach people inside censored countries? This is actually a big problem because all the usual communication channels are blocked and it almost seems impossible to reach the people on the other side of the firewall. So let's now take a look at the most commonly used censorship technologies and how to circumvent each of them. IP address blocking. This is the most basic censorship technique. The sensor simply block all the harmful IP addresses at the national firewall. Fighting IP blocking is also straightforward. We can keep changing our website's IP addresses or we can tell the users to use proxy servers. After a while, the sensors realize that it is difficult to catch up with all the new IP addresses. So they begin to use a new blocking technique. Domain name blocking. Domain name blocking is a much more flexible way for blocking websites. It doesn't matter what IP addresses you change to, as long as you don't change your domain name, your site will be blocked. To fight domain name blocking, we can tell the users to use proxy servers. Then after a while, the sensors realize that there are just too many harmful domains and they can't keep track of all of them. So they implemented another censorship technology. This one is uh, packet filtering. The way it works is by screening packets for harmful keywords. And if, 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 if they found it, the sensor will terminate the connection between the user and the website. To circumvent this type of blocking, we can tell the user to use SSL enable proxy. SSL will encrypt the data, which make it difficult for sensors to, to perform real-time packet filtering. A few years ago, the Chinese government creates something to confuse their internet users. They hijack DNS requests and re resolve certain host names to wrong IP addresses. In one incident, uh, they re redirect all Google users to Baidu.com. For those of you who don't know what Baidu is, it's China's biggest search engine. To fight DNS hijacking, we can tell users to use proxy servers. A few months ago, the Chinese government tried to force all PC makers to pre-install a software on all the PCs they sell. The software is called Green Dam. Uh, it is basically a sensorware and potentially capable of performing all the censorship work and much more powerful. Luckily for now, the Chinese government backed down in the last minute due to public outcry. Um, the best way to fight censorware um, is to remove it. 
software that will remove Green Dam is widely available a few days after Green Dam was released. Now, um, everyone know what we do and how censorship work and how we fighting it. Um, so let's move forward to talk about today's main, po main topic, FO. Uh, stand for fee over email. The concept of FO is very simple. FO uses specially formatted emails to transmit RSS feeds and other information requested by the users. The idea is not much different from sending a HTML uh, email, except the FO uses its um, own data structure instead of using HTML. HTML. So um, you're going to ask, uh, why do we need FO? Um, why not just use the, use the proxy servers? Um, here's a um, number of reasons why. Um, a reliable public pr uh, proxy servers are difficult to find. Uh, proxy servers work great when you can access it. However, web-based proxy servers are just like any other websites that can be blocked by sensors. Once a proxy server is blocked, um, the user will need to somehow find the new ones, and they're very difficult to find. If you are thinking about using software such as Tor, FreeGay, or UltraSurf, be warned that you will have a hard time finding the software in a sensor countries uh, because the download website will be blocked. Even if you can find a, a copy of the client side proxy program, uh, depending on which program you use, you may have different problems. Some programs are very slow during rush hours. Some may impose their own censorship to conserve bandwidth. Others may charge their users um, to cover the bandwidth costs. We need a reliable communication mechanism to keep in touch with the people inside sensor countries. Uh, that, that is why we create FO, to keep in touch with the people in sensor countries and to send news proxy URLs and other useful information to them. Let's look at how FO works. The concept for FO is actually very simple. Uh, it uses email to transmit RSS feeds and other type of files. In order to use FO, the user needs to own an email account or, on a server outside their countries. For example, a Chinese internet user should create an account from um, Gmail, but not from Badu. The reason for this is that mail services in censored countries may censor full messages due to local regulations. Uh, to avoid this kind of problems, it is safer to just use mail services that are out of the controls of the censors. In addition, the user also need to be download a copy of the full client. Once the user has the uh, email account and the client software, the user can start the full client and specify what RSS feeds he wants. 
um, the client which is on the um, right side of the right side of the graph were then connected to the user's email server and send a message to the full server to request for the feeds. Know that the connection between the client and its mail server should be SS encrypted. This is necessary in order to bypass sensors packet filtering. When the full server, which is on the left side of the graph, receives the request, it will download the requested RSS feeds for the client and then email it back to the client's email address. When the client receives the reply message, it will ver verify the content and then display the feeds on the client screen. Let's see um, what full messages look like. First, let's take a look at client messages. When you see on the screen, it's a full request message. This is the message that full client sends to the full server to request for RSS feed. Uh, as you can see, uh, the client tells the server its identity, the password is actually hashed with some additional data to prove that request is to originally from the real users. The reason of authentication is because email headers can be easily forged and that we don't want some attackers to use the full server to spam uh, full users. In third line, you will see the client is requesting a fee with the name VOA. Here you can see what the server message looks like from a uh, conceptual standpoint and the core of the message is the RSS fee that the user requested. Then FO wraps the RSS fee with its own data structure or more precisely adding some header information. Then FO will compress the entire message to reduce the size and at the same time avoids content filtering. At last, FOW will encode the compressed message using base64 encoding. Um, now this may not be necessary, but we are just doing it anyway to avoid problems. So uh, let's summarize how full works. Uh, full messages are embedded in email messages. Also, full messages are compressed so it can first reduce the message size, second, bypass content, uh, content filters. Re uh, the requirement is user needs a foreign email account, for example, Gmail. Also, full clients sends a request to full server via email. Full server download the request feeds and the emails, emails them back to the users. And full client download the full message and display the feeds or save the file to the user's computer if it's downloaded. So what are some advantages of using FO? And then what, 
why don't we simply ask the user to use email to commu communicate with us? First, Fo ha um, has a friendly user interface, which does everything automatically and keeps the users updated. News feeds and updates will arrive automatically when they become available. Users don't need to press the reload button regularly in order to get latest news. Unlike um, web-based proxy, Flow server can, cannot be blocked, so users don't need to find new proxies. Second, uh, since Flow is based on the email, it is very easy to port the program to other platforms, including mobile phones, Linux, uh, FreeBSD, OS X, and many others. Third, uh, Fo supports push messaging. What it means is that we can push breaking news and emergency messages to the users. If there's a big earthquake, we can push the latest updates to the users. If there's a security flaw in, in Fo, we can push the patch to the client. Um, Next, uh, Fo can provide a more reliable service because sensors cannot block the Fo server directly. Finally, Fo's development and maintenance costs are relatively low because it relies on open standards such as SMTP, uh, POP3, IMAP, and XML. Software libraries for these protocols are widely available for free. Maintaining the full server is also relatively inexpensive, as there are many email service providers out there who can host the full server for very low cost. So why do we choose to build Fo on top of email protocols? There are millions of email servers on the internet. The chances that user can find, create a usable email account are far greater than finding a good proxy server. Also in practice, sensors cannot possibly block all the email servers in the world unless they want to isolate themselves from the rest of the world. There is no need to update proxy addresses because Fo doesn't rely on traditional proxies in order to function properly. Users can enable SSL when using SMTP, POP3, and IMAP which is an added advantage because it helps to circumvent pocket filtering. The full architecture is more reliable than most other anti-censorship technologies. It is inexpensive to develop and to maintain. Users can also use the full service for free if they can find a free email service provider, such as Gmail. Fo is difficult to block. Sensors cannot block the Fo server directly. The most that a sensor can do is to block certain email provider, such as Gmail. That will cause problems for users with Gmail accounts, but it will now affect other users who use other email providers. In addition, the full architecture allows an uh, unlimited number of full service points with each service point only provide services to a limited number of users. This architecture also made the full service as a whole more reliable.
Now let's take a look at what folk can be used for. There are sample of usages of uh, news feeds, RSS, podcasting, file download, distribute proxy IP, also get user feedback and push the important announcements. The full architecture is flexible and can be modified to support any other functions. But uh, let's talk about Fo's limitations. Just like most programs, Fo is not perfect, and it has its limitations. Let's find out what they are. Uh, can Fo be blocked? The short answer is yes. Um, if the sensor blocks the email servers, then the Fo client will stop working. If the email account is closed, then the full client will not work. If the email provider turns evil and starts blocking all full messages, the client will not be able to get updates. However, it is very difficult for the sensor to completely block the full network. The sensor's actions will likely only affect a subset of the user the full users. <laughs> what FO is and isn't. FO is a tool to allow users to receive new news feeds, podcasts, files, programs, and the proxy updates. A complement to existing anti-censorship solutions. FO is not um, a universal proxy solution, and it's not for real-time applications, also or for downloading large files. The supported, full supported uh, platforms, including currently supporting Microsoft Windows, potentially on Linux, uh, FreeBSD, Mac, Mac OS 10 also can easily be ported to most mobile platforms. How to improve FO? Um, it's ran on other protocols, uh, for example, Jabber instead of SMTP, or um, create a client side plugin architecture or we can create an architecture to allow anyone to set up a full server to provide different services. Also, we can port FO to another operating systems, like um, create full clients for mobile devices. Okay, it's show time. Okay, let's take a look at the client's interface. Uh, right here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The news feeds are displayed on the main screen. As you can see, um, they are Chinese and English feeds.
it's updated on the August this August first. You can you can choose either English or VOA Chinese or VOA English uh, from these subscriptions right here. Also, when you click the links, as you can see, the um, it's a proxy links. I use the uh, free anonymous.org. So when the proxies uh, got blocked, it, um, we can constantly uh, update the proxy, the new proxies to, uh, to the full client. So you don't need to wait like a few days to get a new proxy. Um, Here we I run this full server on the same um, laptop um, environment here, but um, in in the production um, world, we need to put this full server somewhere. Um, just just show you. Okay. So how you can help? Foe is just one of the many tools that helps to fight internet censorship. You can help to fight censorship by contributing to the Foe project by writing codes, submitting new ideas, writing papers, talking about on your blogs or websites, and in any ways that you can imagine. Um, we do not accept money contribution, but thank you for asking. <laughs> Creating your own anti-censorship tools and make it freely available to the public. Uh, set up your proxy service or other anti-censorship service to help people in censored countries. How you may make a few bucks, have a promising uh, product or great idea that can help us to fight censorship. We are constantly looking for new anti-censorship products and ideas. So if you have a good product or idea, please let us know. If we find your product or idea promising, we may be able to find your uh, project. Of course, we are not DOD, so we don't have billions of dollars to spend. But who cares about money, right? <laughs> um, Again, if you have some ideas that you want to share with us, please contact me. Uh, after this presentation, we will have a, a QA section in room 104. Uh, please stop by if you have any questions regarding FO, our program, or anything else. Thank you again for coming here. Uh, I would like, also like to thank DEFCON for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much. Okay, actually, since we ended early and the Q&A room is actually still occupied, we'll do about 15 minutes of Q&A here. Um, so I think the best way to do that is if you have questions, you can line up, I guess, down that aisle over there, and we can take your questions there. And if there are still questions after 15 minutes, we will move over to the Q&A room. So if you have questions, why don't you line up right there behind this gentleman? Oh, no, I guess not. He's moving. Where you go? You got a question? Okay, go ahead. Also, you can distribute information about the email addresses, and of course, 
presence of the applications in itself uh, an incriminating factor. I'm wondering how you're looking to deal with that. That was, that was cheating. That was way more than one question. The bootstrap for real person. <laughs> That's great, your job, man. Um, so, can you let me? Okay. Can you repeat the first part of your question? <laughs> Sorry. How do you plan on starting this up? Just like you have trouble getting information on proxies out and getting the clients for say Tor out into these countries, the guys are all blocked. How do you plan on getting information on Flo out and how do you plan on getting the Flo on your out? Um, advertising? <laughs> um, I guess um, the advertising is a one uh, one way and or um, just send uh, emails uh, like newsletters because uh, VOA sends up uh, millions of emails out and we can announce that um, on, on the email uh, this one way and also we can um, go to those um, uh, blog on the ch in China or those sensor countries and let them know the, pro uh, the client software is available um, yeah, that's pretty much I can think of right now. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? If you had a big voice, yell them out, I'll repeat it. How much progress have you made on it so far? Is it finished and have you distributed it? Uh, how many copies are out there? Um, I just started. So, um, it's still in the, um, uh, it, I, I'm, I'm still in the um, a making of it. I mean, um, so that's why I'm saying I, um, that's in the last, last part of speech, I said uh, you can help and help me to add your codes and, and new ideas to it. Yes, sir. What language are you programming it in? What language are you, what language are you programming it in? What computer language? C++? Something else? Uh, C Sharp. C Sharp? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, sir. Uh, when people go out and retrieve such information, do they save it or is it normally just they want the current? Do they keep it for a long yeah. time? Yeah, it, I, it, what he's asking is how much history is preserved within the interface, so does it maintain everything that you've downloaded or is it only keeping current information? No, it's uh, updated every like few minutes. Uh, it, it just grabbed the RSS feeds from the website. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood your question, I think. That was more like with user intent, do users want to save this for prosperity or do they just want to <coughs> maintain So I think maybe how, how much history can and how configurable I mean, because in some cases, maybe you don't want to save it, right? Right. Which, yeah, is it better not to save yeah. it in content? So, so I think what he's asking is, can is the tool configurable so that you can say, as soon as I read it, I want to dump it, I want to get rid of it, so that yeah, you, no there's a, there's an option so that you can you can click uh, clear all the news on the on the client on, on the client software. Okay, this gentleman right here. Yes, a Persian, because uh, uh, in view A there's the 60 languages. The main thing, uh, you know, like Persian and Iran, we're, we're willing to do that as well.
So let, let me repeat the question. Um, the young lady in the front is asking whether there is potential in the future to have bi-directional communication outbound as well as inbound and maybe potentially supporting peer-to-peer. -peer. See, I did a much better job summarizing that than yours. If I can uh, just fill in here. Um, I'm just an uh, assistant over here. Um, can you hear me? Yes, okay. louder. All right. Um, I guess what FO is actually a software that complements existing uh, software like Tor, um, FreeGay, and a number of other software. So in your case, you want to like, uh, submit video to uh, YouTube or some other website. You're probably better off using something like a general purpose uh, proxy, proxy type of software. Uh, Fo can help you to get those software if you want to say, okay, I want to download this uh, tour, but I don't know where to get it. But if you, if for some reason or somehow you can get uh, Fo to your computer, you can get all the software that you need to do other type of funny things. Okay. Yes, sir. Given that Fo and the user countries like China and Iran are for people to be and receive, is there going to be some capability to destroy? Uh, that's a setting on the full client. You can clear all the news on the client yeah, in advance. Yeah, basically, basically erasing it, can it erase its own tracks? Oh, we certainly add that function later. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? Yes, sir. How are the themes chosen for the server? Like, I can't, I can't speak Chinese, I can't speak Iranian, so if I were running a full server, how would I know what uh, this, uh, this is sub a subscription on the top of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's written in English, but you can uh, choose the subscription on the, on the client. You can pick uh, English or Chinese or Persian. So you can read it from. So, so the fees are chosen from the client side, not at the server. Yeah. Well, my question was basically like, do they want to read QVC? Do they want to read Google? Do they want to read the New York Times or whatever? What what fees are present on the server when they client? Oh, you you certainly have a choice of that. Uh, now we only get for, from VOA news websites. So later maybe you can choose from different. Uh, news like media, like CNN or anything. Can, can I ask something here? Uh, we sure. have time for one more, and then we're going to actually move down into the Q and A room. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, you know what? You got to speak up, or if you can come closer, maybe we can get your mic. Sorry about that. So, so the question is can you switch back and forth to proxies if one proxy may disappear? Yeah. Okay, actually. So let, let me repeat again. Uh, the gentleman asked whether there was any way to have knowledge of all of the proxies that are out there. I, th I think we are um, now currently we we can manually update it, but um, in the future we we just uh, list all the um, all the proxies and uh, in, in the in the database and grab it automatically to. Uh, the next uh, available proxies. Can I add something to it? Um, I'm sorry, to, to, excuse me, yeah. Um, actually, it's a separate program in BBG. Um, there's a, we have managing a, a pool of uh, 
web-based proxy. So in that case, let's say your, your um, that particular one is blocked, we have a, uh, they have actually a mechanism to actually detect that kind of blocking and then say, okay, this proxy is down now. We, when, whenever somebody, a full, full client, try to request a new fee, we'll send a new proxy along with the fee. Um, well, what happened is, it, well, but the default behavior is whenever there's a new um, article, news article that come out, it will automatically send it to the full client as long as the full client is online. So at that point, that the, the proxy link along attached to the to the fee will be updated at that point. Okay, we're, we're actually going to move everyone into the Q&A room because uh, i got to get set up for the next speaker. So thank you very much.